What is good guys, it's Ray J back with another video, and in this one I want to break down what's going on with Tesla Spy, video, the QQQ, and a couple of other tickers. I'm also going to break down some things that Jerome Powell sent, how this is affecting the markets. But let me first say that I am not a financial planner, so take nothing I say as financial advice. And also if you guys can, please check out the Weeble link, which is down below and in the description. If you sign up for Weeble and deposit $500 into the account, you're guaranteed 20 free stocks. If you deposit $25,000 or more, you're guaranteed 75 free stocks and offerings very, very soon in just a couple of weeks. Anyways, looking at the market, SPY has a nice little bounce that has formed right over here. It's attempting to push higher, uh, but it's kind of shuffling between these resistance levels right over here. We're kind of stuck very close to the 520.6 to 520.5 area. And the question is, can we push higher? It's going to depend on different factors. Let me first talk about Jerome Powell before I break down these charts. Jerome Powell gave a speech at 12.10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time today, and he said some important things. Powell mentioned that the recent data do not materially change the overall picture, which continues to be one of solid growth. A strong but rebalancing labor market and inflation moving down towards 2% on a sometimes bumpy path. That's actually some very interesting stuff because Powell was not being as dovish as before. He actually changed his tone a bit. And he was being very, very, I would say, in the middle. Uh, he wasn't super, super dovish or super, super hawkish, just kind of in the middle for the speech. And he also mentioned that the Fed is expecting to lower rates this year. But there is a problem with that. And the problem is, uh, even though they are projecting that, there's no guarantee right now that they're going to do it. Because Powell was saying that looking at inflation and other indicators out there, they have to be very, very careful to not end up cutting too early or keeping the rates up for too long. He also emphasized the need for more evidence that inflation is easing before they end up cutting. So they need essentially more better data. They need more data to look decent for them to continue to do so. I think that's part of why his speech ended up being like this is because uh, you have to remember that looking at the data from yesterday, the market ended up tanking when we got the manufacturing numbers. We are seeing signs of prices going up and crude oils going up as well. So not the best of points right now. And there are some signals that inflation could still go up. So the Fed is saying that, hey, we need the opposite of that. We need to see more signals that inflation is going down for us to officially cut. They're implying that there's no guarantee they're going to cut in June and they may not even be cutting anytime soon. It could take them many, many months until we, they get ready for the first cut. It may not happen until the end of this year. So it's pretty crazy. This is very, very interesting. He also used the word bumpy path, saying that for them to get back to that 2% target, uh, there could be a bumpy path in the process. So you want to be very, very careful with him saying that. Uh, that's part of why SPY didn't really get a, a very, very big continuation higher. We didn't like pump really hard we're seeing buyers tr still trying to defend the charts but overall it's just kind of flat in this range so we'll see how things go at this point watch 521 is key resistance if you break this we have a gap to fill into the 522.25 area and if we turn bearish you want to see this thing basically lose our 519 support if we do lose this this would be like a, a false breakout a failed breakout and this thing could start sinking all the way back down to lower levels so make sure you watch those levels as of right now it's just trading sideways not really doing a whole lot uh, so i'm just going to leave it at that and just give it some time watch and see how it closes tesla was trying to push up to about 168 but you can see 167.8 is acting as resistance so now it's shuffling as well around 167.8 if we turn bullish you want to see it break past 170 if we break that we're going to be pushing all the way up to this imbalance fill we could get very close to 174 if we break that if we turn back down watch 165 as key support if we lose that a bigger drop could be coming to 162 if not 160 otherwise we're completely stuck right now we're kind of stuck going back and forth between 167.8 uh in that range around that so we'll just have to give it some more time we'll see how well this holds up and if we can get one more push so i'd rather be a little bit more patient in the process for the qqq it's the same thing as spy very very choppy it, was, it got this nice big bar up, got a nice push by almost four points, came down a little bit. Now it's just trading sideways at this resistance at 443. If we want to be bullish, you want to see this thing break out towards 446, break past 444 to go to 446. If we're bearish, you want to see it lose 442 and start sinking all the way down towards 440. Overall, this chart is showing a little bit of potential, a little bit of life, uh, but we're kind of choppy right now, so I'd rather give it some time. Same thing with Apple, very, very flat. I uh, attempted to get a breakout to 171 came close came back down now we're kind of stuck near 170 just trading sideways so it's very very boring right now so we'll just have to give the market the time it needs uh moving forward i do want to note that there is bullish potential in many stocks out there even like spy has bullish potential if we do get a break uh it's still bullish overall as we're making higher highs and higher lows alongside the qqq but we need more confirmation we need to see this thing get a, a continued break from the highs of the day 
for this to continue pushing. So we'll have to give it more time. But overall, I just want to say that despite this happening, the, the chart's still kind of choppy. So we have to give it time and see if we get our bullish continuation. For Coinbase, I just want to mention that this is kind of flat as well, stuck in this 252 area. Uh, I am concerned, though, about this head and shoulders like structure. Even if it does push a little bit, could we get a big rejection, start sticking back down to complete the head and shoulders? I'd be very, very careful with that anyways. For Meta, Meta is attempting to push higher. It's actually outperforming the market a little bit. If we keep breaking out, we're going to be looking for a move all the way up to about 510. If we break past 507.5, overall, I'm seeing some potential. For Microsoft, Microsoft is a little flat right now. And I think that when you look at it, we got a nice kind of double bottom like structure. I could see this thing trying to push for 423 again if we do break this look for a bigger pump. But as of right now, it hasn't really done that. So with that being said, guys, I just want to thank you all so much for listening. Uh, we're just going to give SPY the time it needs and be very, very patient. I do see some bullish potential in these charts, but the issue is we're very uh, sideways right now. We're just kind of ping-ponging. So just give the market some time. Uh, know there is bullish potential, and we'll see how things go by the end of the day. Thank you for listening, guys. Have a great day, and peace out.